Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to 6 a.m. Bible study. Give people some time to get on. Hello, how is everybody doing this morning? Welcome Good to morning. our Life Church 6 a.m. Bible study. Mama T goes hard for the 6 a.m. group, <laughs> wherever you are. Uh, she is very adamant about keeping this available and flowing for people all over the world who can receive in the mornings or receive late morning, whatever time it is where you're at. Um, she is very, very serious about feeding you guys early in the morning, um, in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, she's going to make sure you guys get a message. And so, uh, prophetess Taryn Tarver Bishop is a mother of this household, um, the CEO of this platform. And we honor her and we thank her for pushing us into new dimensions and to be better in spirit. And in truth, amen. Amen. So good morning, wherever you are. Good morning, wherever you are located. Um, we have had our crusade our this whole week, and it's been really, really good this entire week. Um, I believe Mama T will be tomorrow getting up and ministering a little bit too. So that will be great. Like I said, after this week, um, after she's received a lot and been able to kind of, uh, um, it, it's very rare that you get to rest in your own house or, you know, just watch and receive. And so she's been able to do that um, this week. And so you can expect on Sunday and tomorrow her to be on fire and her to be on a 10. Okay, that is what you can expect. So you will not want to miss service on um, Sunday. You won't want to miss tonight. You won't want to miss tomorrow night. Um, it's going to be deep. It's going to be so good. And then our healing conference that's going to, that's coming up, you will not want to miss that. I mean, you have to understand when somebody who carries a gift, like that is their primary thing that they do. They come in, they unlock a dimension in your own building uh, for you to operate in a different dimension of healing. I remember one time Papalo did an encounter. Uh, it was like our first encounter after COVID. And I remember we rented out this building and he came in and he killed it. And it was just like deliverance broke out. And I remember the next day, uh, he wasn't there, but the next day, um, the same thing that we saw the night before him do as far as deliverance, people slithering on the ground, people turning and screaming, all that was happening the next day. And Mama T was just doing everything that she saw him doing. This is like five years ago. Um, and I remember messaging, uh, my spiritual father and being like, Papa, she is operating in a whole different dimension. And he said that he had left the angels of deliverance there with her. So when he comes to a place, when someone comes to a place, they don't just come and they minister and they leave. They leave a part of what they carry there with them. Amen. So that place is blessed from this day on. When we traveled to London and did a conference, an altar was left in London at that arena. Anybody who does anything, uh, say we sold the building, anybody who did anything after that building, after we sold it, whatever, they would prosper because you're leaving a piece of what you carry in that area. Where the house that we used to do ministry in, uh, I mean, it was a ministry house, ministry house. And it wasn't that big, but it was a ministry house. I mean, we did deliverance in the house. Mama T taught everything in the house. This was before we did um in-person teachings at all. It was all over Zoom. It was COVID. So it was, it was the ministry house. Ah, whoever's in that house afterwards, whoever sits where she sits, whoever decides to move in, they are blessed automatically. And if they carry a little bit of juju with them, they will hate the environment. They will hate the place. Does it make sense? They will totally hate it. So you have to understand, even you who is anointed, where you sit and where you work, 
is blessed. Anybody who gets this chair after me where I sit and I intercede and I pray, anybody who gets this apartment after me, anybody who gets this car after me is blessed because of what I carry. I leave a piece of me wherever I go. You're blessed. So the environment around you has no choice but to be blessed. You could pass something down to a younger sibling and they're out of the, they're blessed by way of you just carrying it, by you just having it. You see so many people when Papalo's walking through, they're like, take my shawl, take this, just touch it, just do this. You have to understand you carry a similar anointing. Amen. So I wanted to teach this morning about impressions of the spirit, impressions of the spirit. Because many people are like, how do you, how do I hear from God? And what are different ways you hear from the God? What primary way that you will hear from the Lord is impressions from your spirit, man. So when we teach, build up your spirit. When you pray, you're strengthening, you're strengthening your spirit. When you're meditating, you're strengthening your spirit. When you're listening, you're strengthening your spirit, right? Your spirit man is in control. You notice the difference in your lifestyle when your spirit man is in control and when it's not. You know, when your flesh is in control versus when your spirit's in control. When God tries to wake you up at 3 a.m. and you can wake up like that and you're ready to pray versus my flesh is all over the place. And so I'm not getting up. I'm not listening to 6 a.m. this morning. I don't feel like it. It's when feelings are controlling you versus what you know spiritually to be true. Hello? Are you guys hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. So what you need to understand is God is not measuring your fasting to say you're spiritual. He's not measuring how much you pray to say that you're spiritual, although all those things are good because they are building up your spirit. He's not measuring how much you pray for people uh, to say you're spiritual. There's something that he measures to prove you are closer to him to prove you are different than the other people that are just waking up and going to church routinely. And it's more than outward acts. He's not looking at what did you do today to glorify me and say, ah, you're good, you're good, because you woke up and the first thing you did was pray. We, as humans and Christians, we measure based on what we can see. We see somebody and they look good. They look blessed. So we say that they're blessed. God doesn't measure in that same way. God is looking at the deposit of what is inside of you. He's looking at what is in you. What does that mean? He's looking at how well are you responding to the impressions of the spirit? Because how well I respond to the impressions of the spirit determine how well and how close I am to God. For an example, we see Esther, right? Esther has a big task before her. She has to go approach the king. She knows typically people die for this. I don't know how. So the spirit impresses on her, hey, tell everybody to fast. And you yourself, you fast too before you go and approach so your spirit can be built up. So she responded to what the spirit man was putting on her to do in order before she went and approached the king. A lot of us, we get, we know there's a shift coming. We know this is a transitional season. God is telling you it's time for fast. And it's not like, okay, we're doing a corporate fast. You already know before we do a corporate fast that it's going to be time to fast soon. Am I right? Amen. You, those that connect, you already know, right? Why do you think that you know that? Because your spirit man is already impressing on you what time it is. So those who are like, I know we're about to fast soon, they're in the spirit. That is how God is measuring you. How well are you capturing onto those impressions and how well, not only how well do I capture onto them, but how well am I responding to them? Is this making sense? So I can be out and I can be praying, I can be praying, but how well do I respond to that still voice that tells you sometimes don't lay hands on this person, even because that happens sometimes spiritually. You want to pray so bad for somebody, God's like, uh-uh, leave them be. How well do I respond to even that? That is how God is measuring how close you are to me. He said, my sheep hear my voice, right? 
So if I don't hear him, if I don't respond to his voice, how much of a sheep am I really to him? The closer I am in him, my capacity is increased. From that capacity is what God uses to interact in the material world. I don't know if this is making sense. So God is measuring you based off of what's inside of you. A lot of you don't know what's inside of you because you don't respond to the voice that is already inside of you. So that voice that's saying, continue, push on, persevere, your time is near. You don't respond to that voice, so you don't know what's inside of you. But that is what God is measuring. How well are we responding to the impressions of the spirit? I try to give you guys examples so, so you know. You could feel like, there's something going on at my job. I don't know what it is. And God's telling you to pray or he's telling you, hey, stay connected in this season. And I can either do as the spirit man is saying, as he's impressing on me. And when I say impressions, it's like you get this. An impression is a, a lot of times it's, it's a, it's stronger than a feeling. It's like a conviction. Like I have a conviction this morning to be in my word. I have a conviction to not do this thing. It's an impression. I wake up one morning and I don't know that I loved this house before, but now I'm just, I can't stand this house. It's getting on my nerves. I don't know what it is. The spirit man is impressing on you. You won't be here too much longer. Or it could be everything. I don't know what it is that my job is irritating me in this season. I don't know why. Spirit man is impressing up. Uh, your time is coming to an end, but persevere in these last days of the time that you're here. So what God is measuring is how much do you have room in you for the direction that I want to give you? That's why a lot of times when we want the full plan, he's telling Abraham, he's saying, hey, listen to the first instruction. Because if I pour out the entire plan on you, in you, you will have no room to put it because you don't yet have the capacity to fulfill the entire plan. So that's why God goes in seasons. He moves in season. He says, there is a time for everything under the sun. He operates in seasons. He gives you a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. But for some reason, you can see the end. Some reason, you know what the ultimate vision is, but he's giving you little direction in between. Why is he giving you that direction in between? Is because with every step of obedience, we are increasing our capacity. Because when God pours out a blessing, he wants to pour it out in excess. He wants to really bless you. Yet he's looking at you and saying, you will not be able to maintain this. So little by little, I have to give you instruction. Little by little, I have to give you direction. Little by little, I have to add unto you so that it widens your capacity. And I can then pour in excess. Hello? Hello? So you're asking God right now, where, God, where is this, 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 this? He's saying, you don't have room to put this, 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 this. And some of you will be honest with yourself and say, I really don't. I pray for a husband every day, but honestly, I can't even, I can't even get my word in at this time. How am I going to fit in the husband? I pray for my business that I know I'm supposed to do, but where do I even have time for the business? I can't even accomplish this little task. So with everything, God is measuring what's inside of you and he's determined to increase it. But how do I increase what's inside of me? I have to respond to the impressions of the Holy Spirit. My response determines how ready I am for the next step. My response. And I mean, when you know, I am supposed to be doing X, Y, and Z. And I feel it deeper than ever that this is the time that I cannot play 
with my salvation. Or this is the time I not play with my fasting. Or I cannot play, play with my connection. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to respond accordingly because whatever God is preparing me for, I want to be ready for. A lot of you have many impressions sitting on your chest and God's just waiting for you to respond to them. It could be something so simple as he's waiting. God, the Holy Spirit's so funny because he'll give you simple things, but they're not as simple as you think. Like, it's time to change your wardrobe. Why is it time to change my wardrobe? Lord, where am I going to get the finances for that? But instead of trying to figure out why and where and what and how, I'm going to start by going in my closet and just getting rid of some things because I'm making room for the blessing that God wants to pour out to me. Lord, I may not have the finances, but I know you'll provide it. I may not have all the clothing to get, but I know little by little you will do it. I need somewhere to put it. So I'm just going to go ahead and empty out my closet and things that are old, things that I don't need anymore to make room for what it is you are going to give me. Many times we sit and we reason with God. Well, where's that going to come from? Or how is that? He's like, no, it doesn't matter. Make room. It does not matter. Make room. Because what? When he pours out a blessing, he wants to pour in excess. It's no different than a parent. You want to spoil your kid. But also a good parent analyzes, am I hurting this kid or am I helping them by spoiling them in the way that I want to? I want to, but I may not give them all of that right now. A parent would be silly to give uh, a kid their entire inheritance before they can even understand what an inheritance is or what to do with it. And we see it happen sometimes when we see them uh, mess things up, right? So God operates as a good father. So he's looking like, I want to give you everything, but I don't want everything to A, push you away from me, and B, to deter you from purpose. So the question you have to ask yourself is where am I going to put it? Where? How much room have I made? Hello, how much room have you made? Like I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to myself. No, we hear We're you. Here. We hear you. So instead of trying to figure out everything from start to finish, I love Abraham because he was giving very little direction at the beginning. Very little, but he just responded to the voice of God. And in him responding to the voice of God, you saw things little by little come together. And if he didn't hear from God, you saw him build an altar and you saw him, uh, we can't move until we get a response because we don't know where we're going. But us. We don't get a response, we get anxious. We say, God, you're not listening to me. God, you're not hearing me. God, you're not yet. He sees everything from start to finish. And he is simply waiting for a moment to manifest in your life. I love Papa Malo's message yesterday because he was saying, you don't see God when everything is great. <laughs> you see him when there's trouble. It gives him an opportunity to manifest himself. So when things are going good, you thank God, you're, you're grateful to God, but you don't really just see God everywhere. He said, but when there's chaos, when there's trouble, when there's, when you get fired and you know that, you know, he said, that is an opportunity where you really start to search and see God. So he allows situations to happen in your life so that you can manifest him.
I'm going to say right now, a lot of you have grace, but if you do not respond to the calling, you have taken the grace for granted. You are rejecting the grace. A lot of you have been given the instruction, yet you've rejected the instruction. So therefore you are rejecting the grace that God is providing unto you. To reject instruction from God is to re reject grace from God. Because anything that he instructs you to do is leading you into deeper grace. It's going to, it benefits you and him. It's a double-edged sword. So he's saying when you don't respond to the impressions of the spirit, you are rejecting the grace that is available unto you. Grace is something that hits you when you least deserve it and when you least expect it. Grace is not something I can just go out and I find and I'm, I need grace right now. So I'm going to go out and seek it. No, grace finds you. Grace locates you. If you are trying to find God, you find him by agreeing with him. You find him by agreeing with his word. You find him by aligning with his word. To find him is to agree with him. The word says, can two walk together unless they meet? No. So unless we meet and we agree, we cannot walk together. So for your next level to come, you have to meet him. I can't make God in my own image. I can't make God in what fits in my box, in my mind. I can't make God what I want to make him. The point of salvation is to change and be transformed. That is the evidence of salvation. So therefore, for my next level to come, I have to meet him, transform with him, walk with him. I may be rejected with him. I may be denied with him. But guess what? With him, I cannot lose. With him, all things are good. With him, I am attracting so much grace. See, the problem with the world is we want to make God in our image, what is comfortable for us. I want to make him in my image. God will never fit in any human's image. So what is God looking for when he looks at you? God is looking for a reaction. Because he's saying, if I am in your life, why is there no reaction to me towards you? We react to bills. We react to sickness. We react to the loss of a relative. We react to death. Yet, how well do we react to God if he is truly in my life? How well is my reaction to you, Holy Spirit? When I feel your move, do I, have you ever had a time where you were in the presence of God and you just felt like I can't even have my shoes on right now? I got to take them off. No one else is doing it but you. You're reacting to the Spirit. Your reaction doesn't have to look like everybody else's. I think we look around and we're like, I'm going to do what everybody else does. Yet your reaction looks like what's inside of you. It's similar to faith. Faith is, faith is the response to your spirit because you heard God. So you heard, you received direction from him. Now by faith, I am moving forward in whatever direction I receive. Whatever the spirit man captured, I am moving forward by faith. Faith is a response. I must have faith because I know what I saw. It's a response. So God is always measuring your reaction to see how well you hear him. Someone can walk around and be like, I hear from God all the time. I hear from God all the time. He speaks to me in my dreams. But you're looking at them and you're saying, then why is nothing about you changing? You hear from God all the time. Why is nothing about you improving? You hear from God all the time. To hear is one thing. To react is another. To hear is one thing. To respond is another. 
I can get a dream and God's warning me about something. But if I do nothing with it, then all I did was get a dream with no response. No response. I had a one-on-one -on -one yesterday and a young lady was sharing a dream with me and she was sharing a dream that startled her. And it was about her son and some death was connected to her son. And so I said, so when you woke up from that dream, what did you feel? She was like, I felt angry. I said, so did you respond with that emotion that you felt? Because your spirit man is also has emotions. You guys know that, right? Your spirit man is, it expresses its emotion through your soul. That's why I can be in worship, praise and worship. And all of a sudden I'm not a crier, but then the cry just comes. I don't know why I just feel like crying after hearing the song. It's my spirit man. It is expressing emotion through my soul. If you ever see a demon cast out, you don't see uh, any prophet or any pastor happy. You see like an, uh, an anger come over them because it's the spirit man in, in expressing the emotion through the soul. So I asked her, what did you feel when you woke up from that dream where you saw the enemy attacking your son? I felt angry. I said, did you respond? She was like, what do you mean? I said, did you go into prayer and cancel and cover and thank God for protection and think, hey, if he's showing it to you, God is showing you the plot of the enemy. So now I have the power to scatter the plot because it was shown to me. God's never going to show you something that he doesn't want there to be put an end to. Does it make sense? So she used that and she's like, okay. So, so when you see something like that and you are now analyzing the emotion of your spirit, now here's, I'll give something different. Maybe God shows you your grandfather and God shows him taking him. You may not have a angry feeling, right? As if you would with your child who is definitely, the, it's not your time, right? I may not be angry. I may be sad. I have to know what response is required in that moment. Right? Sometimes you may feel sad, but you may know, God, you're preparing me because you don't want me to mourn heavily later. So even in my response, I have to use discernment. What is the spirit man saying to me? Some people are like, well, I don't know. You grow in analyzing what the spirit man's telling you. Absolutely, you grow in it. If you think that every prophet and everybody just woke up, they just knew exactly what God was telling him. No, they seek. And they find and God communicates to them and they grow in it. So God is measuring your reaction to see if you can hear him. He's also seeing how well can you hear me. Is this making sense? God is gracious sometimes too, and he'll show you this person's going to go soon. You may pray and intercede and he will extend because he's gracious. But then you'll realize maybe by the third time of praying and interceding and he's extended, you're like, I know this time is the time because God is telling me, no, I've extended it enough. I don't know. Papa Loa shared the story with his brother on how that happened. God was like, I'm taking him. There were many times that it looked like God was going to take him before. And we all prayed and we interceded. We came to the church. We were in there day in and day night interceding. And God was gracious and extended. But then the very last time he said no. Some people overlook God's graciousness and still at the end, well, God, why? You have to understand some things have to happen. Even for your own elevation, some things have to happen. Without death, there is no new beginning. Amen? I need someone to know that. A seed remains alone unless it dies. So are you guys hearing me as it pertains to impressions? Is it making sense? 
I say death because you even see a lot of times someone dies, there's always like a new child or something birth that's new. God takes somebody, yet this person's pregnant in the family. God takes somebody and they didn't get to meet this person, but somebody new is coming into the picture. So God is measuring how well we respond to him, whether we feel like it, whether we don't. And that's the thing. A lot of times we don't respond because I don't feel like it right now. Or I don't quite know. If you don't know, I encourage you get into a still place with the Lord. Because I know God is good. And he will show you how and what. And it may look like I didn't know exactly how to react in that moment. But even if we miss it, God uses it as a teaching moment the next time. Or he brings revelation concerning it, maybe in a teaching, maybe in a message, maybe in a scripture. And I recapture onto it. I, 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 I re-get what happened and I'm like, okay, now I know if that happens again, this is what I'm to do. Am I helping someone? So when God is impressing things on you, he is essentially telling you to prepare for what the enemy will do to frustrate what you are working on, what it is that he's having you do. So the enemy will always send something to frustrate the plan. So he's saying prepare. It could be your marriage that he plans to come and frustrate. So he's saying, you and your husband, you guys pray more. You and your husband, you stay connected. Guard your household. It may be your business that he plans to frustrate. He's impressing on you what to do so that you are prepared when the enemy will try to frustrate. Because just because you are in God and hearing from God does not mean the enemy won't come and frustrate. But I prepare, I stay strong in spirit. I do what the spirit tells me to do so that the enemy does not prevail. Hmm. It could, you guys, God is good. It could be something like you, your tax work is all over the place and hey, God's showing you a dream of the IRS coming for you. And instead you're binding the IRS saying, I rebuke that plot. And God's actually telling you, make sure your stuff is in order. Get your paperwork together. Get somebody to help prepare your stuff so that when they do come, that you're ready. We do a lot of rebuking yet we don't do a lot of preparing. Ah. I rebuke that plan. God's like, mm, you don't have to rebuke the plan. Just get your stuff ready so that when they come, you're not scrambled trying to figure things out. And now I'm all uh, hot and heavy because I owe this much money. He's like, no, 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 just prepare. It may be you're in a nasty court battle and God is showing them sending CPS to your house. Yes, I scattered the plans of the enemy, but I'm going to make sure when they come, they can't find a thing. They lied on my name anyway. So when they come, Father, if they do come, Lord, send the person that serves you that can see exactly what this is, because this is a, this is silly. You know, make sure my, my fridge is full. I'm going to be excessive. I know I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm going to be excessive. So that when that time does come, Lord, it's an opportunity for you to use the foolish things to confound the wise. Mm. Um, I remember a prophet passion giving Mama T a word about the IRS and get these things together. Uh, she responded to that word. So it wasn't a, well, how am I going to do where she found somebody flew them out. They stayed and she put them in a hotel. They stayed and was working from morning till night for like five days on paperwork on this, on that, just to come to find out she found the issue and why 
it was that the IRS might come because the preparer before wasn't doing what they were supposed to do and this would have gotten in trouble. So that's a response. Are you guys hearing me? You prepare for what the enemy will do to frustrate because he'll always come to fight. He can't steal the plan of God. He can't uh, change the plan of God over your life and steal the blessing. So he'll come and try to frustrate the blessing. So re your reaction to the word that you're receiving, even now, your reaction to the word has entered, it, it becomes a seed that entered into the ground. So you guard it, you know? My reaction to what I hear becomes a seed that has entered the ground, so I have to guard that seed. Your marriage is a seed that enters into the ground, so you guard the seed. You water the seed. You can get married, and you can get married on solid ground, but if I don't water that seed, then that seed will die. If I let weeds constantly grow around that seed, I can expect for the seed to be affected. So it's not just a one-time reaction. It's a constant, I I am reacting to what the spirit has me do in this season. You got Papa Lovi, could, Papa Lovi, Mama T, they could, send, they could release a message that's saying, hey, in this season, be selfish right now. Build yourself up. How well do I respond to that message that was just given? Then I notice the next week, this person's coming to ask me for something. This person's coming to ask me something. This person's coming to ask me something. Then I'm stressed because I'm taking on other people's emergencies and I'm making them my own emergency. Then I'm going to God like, Lord, I don't know why I'm dry. And he's like, did you respond to the message that was given to you? Hello? Am I making sense? My children, could be a lot going on with my children. I'm going to react, okay? Because, and you can frustrate a lot of things, but when it comes to my kids, when you've been analyzing my kids, when you've been uh, setting plots for my kids, when you've been planting seeds in my kids, then we have a problem. So you will see a reaction out of me. And understanding we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. My weapons of warfare are not carnal. So you have to use the right weapon for whatever it is that you're encountering as well. If, I, if you're going through mental attacks, you don't bind mental attacks. I don't bind thoughts. It doesn't work like that. The word says by the pulling down of strongholds. So there's strongholds in your mind that I need to pull down. So there's particular weapons. How do I pull down strongholds? By the word of God. So whatever it is the enemy is giving me, I have to replace it with the truth in the word of God. The word of God becomes my bullets. It becomes my weapon. So you have to know which weapon to use for whatever you're experiencing. If you can, uh, when we did the overnight prayer with Prophet Lovi, if you listen to what the prayers consisted of, we were using the right weapon for witchcraft, using the right weapon for uh, uh, for for manipulation. You're moving. He was using the right weapons. Prayer is sometimes a weapon. Your scripture can be a weapon. Intercession is a weapon. Worship is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. So you have to analyze what weapon is needed right now for this particular thing. Does that make sense? Sometimes God will impress on you, just worship. You're frustrated. The enemy's frustrating, just worship. I don't feel like worshiping right now. Well, you just denied responding to the spirit. And that was the weapon that he wanted you to use, worship. I'm trying to ask somebody. Be more spiritual. This is spirituality. This is how you be more spiritual. 
So when God puts something in your spirit, you have to respond. When you hear, when something happens in the world, we definitely respond. When COVID hit, everybody responded. They were running to the store. They were preparing. They were stocking up. Everybody was, toilet paper was gone. Cleaning products was gone. Everything was gone. Everybody was responding. But how come we can't respond when God puts something in our spirit? Some of you, he'll even warn you before it happens, but you're like, um, I don't know if that was me or that was God. And it hinders your ability to respond. How do I even help knowing if it's me or it's God? You have to guard yourself in your heart. When I guard myself into my heart, then I know when God is speaking and when it's just the enemy speaking to me. It comes from two places. I'm going to tell you some things that hinder your yourself from being able to respond, hinder you from be, being able to respond to your spirit unclean things will always hinder you. If you're living in sin or if you're uh, uh, struggling with unclean things, then you can definitely, you can, you will be, you will see yourself struggling to be able to respond. You're frustrating your spirit when you engage with unclean things. It frustrates your spirit. So your spirit is unable to respond. It could be a time in your life where, you know, I was just all over the place doing whatever I wanted to do. And I knew that it wasn't right, but I couldn't stop it. That's your spirit unable to respond because you're engaging with unclean things. Everybody's been there, right? Like, I don't know. I couldn't. I don't know what it was. I knew I was doing wrong, but I was just too far in it. You had, you had buried your spirit too far under your flesh to be able to respond. So what do I do after I've experienced that? I repent. God, I repent. I repent with my heart. The moment that I change means I have responded to his word and he is ready to meet me. Remember being, a, a, remember one of my last years in college, doing whatever I wanted to do, not really listening to the, but there was always this conviction of the Holy Spirit, like, I require more of you is what I would always, I require more of you. And I would just bury it under and under. But the moment I decided it's time to change, the moment I responded, oh, God met me. He met me like as if we had never skipped a beat. He met me as if, how long, why did it take you so long? I have so much for you. And he began to pour out an excess to the point where it was almost overwhelming. God is ready to meet you like that. The moment you change, it means I have responded and he is ready to meet me. He is ready to, your mouth opens and he's ready to fill it. He's ready to use you. He's not looking to hold or can hold something over your head or condemn you or stall. He wants to be, he's like, listen, it's been some time, but I have so much for you. It's good to see you respond to me. Hello. Does that make sense? He is so good. He's gracious. He's he remains in the last place that we left him in. He doesn't change, he doesn't move. He waits for us to be able to find him again. But he's like, you know where to look. You know where I am. So I don't want to be didn't want to be long today. Friday. I want you guys to be able to enjoy the rest of your day. But I wanted to give you this word and I want you to ask yourself, how well am I responding to the impressions of the spirit? And the next time you feel the Holy Spirit telling you something, oh, I'd rather respond than be wrong and not. You will know. You'll be convicted. The next time the spirit says today is a fasting day, whether it was planned or not, you will fast because you'll know, okay, God, you must have something wrong. You're preparing me for something. The next time that God is impressing on you to pray, you'll go pray. You'll respond to the spirit because that is how I become closer to the Lord. And that is what he's measuring to see how much he can pour out into me. What will her response be?
I hope that's making sense. It could be down to the next time the Spirit's telling you, leave that man alone, leave that situation alone, be well with that, that I'm even being obedient and responding to those things. That may be a little harder, yet it's for my good. Anything he impresses on you is for your good. Even if you don't understand it, it's for your good. Especially if it's difficult, it's for your good. And the change that I make is how he's measuring. How well do you know me and how well do you hear me? Are you really a sheep of mine? Because my sheep respond to my voice. The sheep that don't respond, they get led astray. They end up being killed. They end up being in a bad situation. They end up getting beat up. They end up falling in the... You don't want to be a sheep that's led astray because you didn't respond to the call to come back in under the covering. It's about to storm. Amen. That is your task this weekend. Though for the rest of the week, for the rest of the month, it's your task. Be somebody who, even if other people are not, you are responding to the voice within you. And then if you're like, well, I don't really know if I know the voice that well, you'll never know the voice of someone you don't engage with. So up your engagement and it will improve how well you know the voice that's speaking to you. One thing I know about God is if we don't get it right, he even is so gracious that he he helps us. You may have gotten one piece of the formula and not the other one, but he sees, oh, you were trying to respond and I appreciate it. And so he will help you. He's not just, oh, if you don't hit it on um, on the head, then, then you are out of, you don't, that's it. He's not like that. He's good. He will teach. He will correct. He will help. We just have to let him. Amen. Meditation. Yeah, someone said I found that meditation was what I needed. Meditation is how you get answers. I can pray on something and then the next day I'm really, really, I'm being intentional about hearing, listening. What is being dropped in my spirit today? What is God showing me today? You may be struggling with um, forgiveness and then Mama T does a whole love series for the rest of the week and you know the spirit man is telling me listen to every. Siri, listen to every day because it will help you. It's the answer that you need. Yeah. Some may get their answers during worship. Some may get their answers during, but all in all, God answers. So I want us to be intentional about responding to him. And then the moments where, you know, I didn't respond, learn from it. Repent. There will be many more opportunities. Trust me. Many, many more opportunities. So I want us to give what we want to give to God. I want us to pray. If you know I have have not always responded to you, Lord, and I have known more, repent and ask God to continue to speak, continue to impress, and even heighten the impressions within you so that you may grow and so that he can widen your capacity to pour out an excess unto you. Amen. I want us to give and we'll come back and we'll pray.
Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Life Church, for logging in. Thank you for connecting to this word. Um, I know that God will show himself even more now that we have more understanding on how he speaks and when he speaks, and we've given examples on what to do when he speaks. Amen. So I just pray for everybody right now to have an increase in revelation, an increase in knowledge, an increase in understanding, Father, knowing that understanding and knowledge opens up doors and unlocks levels, Lord. I thank you for bringing this increase in our mind, Father, in our spirit, Lord, we just repent for the times that we have not responded to your voice, not responded to your word, Father. May you do a new thing in us. May the change in us be the evidence that you need to know that we hear you, that we are your sheep, that we love you, and we are ready to move when you say move, Father. May you show us and give us clear instruction, Lord, as we seek you, as we seek your face, as we get into a place of stillness, as we meditate. May you reveal yourself to us. May you give us more grace, to be able to complete what is difficult, Lord. And may you manifest in every situation in our lives, Lord. We pray this in your mighty and your holy name. It is done. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, it was. it is good to always be on with you guys in the mornings. We will be back next week for 6 a.m. Our Life Church, 6 a.m. Bible study. Um, you'll want to be tuned in tonight. You want to be tuned in tomorrow. You want to be tuned in Sunday. Um, for those of you who cannot come in person, um, uh, it will be good. It will be mighty. Have we posted details for the healing conference? Have we? Okay. Maybe I'm jumping ahead. Um, but let's see. If you have any questions about things um, upcoming, you can drop them in the chat. However, make sure you're a part of the mentorship group, the premium mentorship group to get all updates. Uh, we're still working on flyers and things for the HEAL conference. So you can, we'll, we'll have updates on that as well. Um, someone asked for a super mom update. Um, I think second round, I'm still in first place for this round. I think they take the first, the top 15 of this round. So, um, like I said, you can cast a new vote every single day, but I am in first place for this round. I think I'm good this round, but I will be posting when they open up the next round so that we can every day cast votes, um, to make sure I make it on to the next round. So thank you guys who keep on voting, who are voting. Um, but we'll start second round of votes, I think next Wednesday. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you. Partake in my glory. Amen. If you have questions, you can drop them in the chat or admin will go through and kind of answer to the best of their ability anything that you have. Um, someone said, am I still going to do mama group? Yes. <laughs> I am working on something, actually. Um, we're trying to do in-person Bible studies in the Bay Area. Um, it might... Without giving too much, we're going to try to do something soon. So, yes, I know a lot of us need this mommy group. So we might just make it and make it free for everybody to come and join a group, uh, uh, um, a group me thing. But yes, thank you for reminding me. Amen. Don't we all need it? <laughs> it is Black Maternal Health Week, too. And so if you are a mama, inspiring mama, you are the bomb. If you are a mom to a child who's not yours, even you're amazing. May God give you more grace and increase you. Amen. 
God bless you all. You have a good rest of your day. You can just continue to drop questions and we'll go through and we'll answer them. Bless you. Bless you. Have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend, Prophetess. Bless you. Thank, Thank you, you Prophetess. Love you. We got God bless you, Prophet. I've been up late nights, uh huh. Catching all the red eyes, oh yeah. Headed to the west side, uh huh. Why you wanna fight, fight? I got this. You can't dim this light, light, oh no. You can't dim this light, light, oh no. You can't dim this shine, shine, oh yeah. God, they call me fake, cause they see me make mistakes But I'm not living for them, so I'm not afraid of they face I done moved on from that place, zoomed on in this race Fight good fight of faith, yeah, all in KB flame, yeah Kill beat, no cane, huh, give life my aim, huh Stay fly like angel, Jesus my anchor Can't kick my feet up, just pull my seat up Driving like G's, bruh, fast lane won't ease Cross on my train, but don't get me crossed up I bless your socks off, instead of trying to cross ya uh, Really showing love, I call that a hover Had to let go of the feelings that I harbor Yeah, I'm calling from the shores, I'm in deep waters But I'm really about the faith, man, I'm unbothered I don't wanna party, wake up in the morning Like, who am I becoming, I, nah, nah Who am I becoming, I, nah, I'm not really making commas Benny Hanna, stop, stop, riding through the city in the summer.